God bless you. God bless you. Good morning. This is Dr. Suzia Smallwood, founder and apostle of Matters of the Heart. I bless the Lord today for who he is in my life, for he is a great God. He's a mighty, mighty, mighty good God. I'm trying to get um, a little bit of music on this morning. And that is not the track that I want, but God bless you this morning anyway. God is a good God. He's a merciful God. Dr. Susie Smallwood with Matters of the Heart on today. I bring you greetings. Glory to God. What a great day this is on today. A great day. A day that the Lord has made. And we're going to rejoice today and be glad in it. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. That's Lee Williams and the spiritual QCs with Jesus Rose. Hallelujah. Thank God that Jesus Rose. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus Rose. Jesus Rose. Jesus Rose. Yes. On a place. Yes. Called Calvary. On oh, Calvary. Stayed there. He stayed there. Three long days. Took him down. Laid him in the grave. Yes. Stayed there. Yes, but Jesus rose. Three long days. Three long days. But on that third day. On the third day. Yes, he rose. He rose. He rose for 
for me. He rose for you. He rose, he rose, he rose. He rose. Yes, he rose. He rose in my soul. Yeah. Yes, he rose. He rose in my soul. He rose in my soul. He rose in my soul. Yes, he rose. He rose in my soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus rose. Jesus rose. Jesus rose, hallelujah. Glory to God, Jesus rose. Glory to God, Jesus rose. Hallelujah. Jesus rose. We bless the Lord on today. I give honor to God on today. Mm, and I thank him so much. Hallelujah for eternal life. Uh, TV on today. I bless the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. I thank the Lord and I honor the Lord for my husband today who is doing my uh, video and for me. And I just thank the Lord because he didn't have to do it. And I'm not the easiest person sometimes to, uh, to work with because I like things done a certain way. And so I just thank the Lord. You know how we are as pastors and and apostles and leaders, you know, we like things done in excellence. But you have to work with people and help them to see until they understand exactly what it is that you're looking for. But I bless the Lord because he works with me through all his frustration. But I just thank the Lord. God is good. God is a good God. He's a mighty, mighty, mighty good God. Again, this is Dr. Susie of Smallwood. Um, founder of After God's Own Heart Ministries, and this program broadcast is Matters of the Heart. And we know we got all kinds of heart matters. Today's message, uh, we're going to be talking about the grace of God. God's grace. The grace of God. God's grace is His grace. And it's the grace of God. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord on today. And um, I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures uh, that I'm going to be working with. I tried to mark them off. I hope I got them in order. But anyway, we're going to start with um, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. It reads, may God bless you with his special favor and wonderful peace as you come to know Jesus, our God and Lord, better and better. As we know Jesus better, his divine power gives us everything we need for living a godly life. I'm going to read that again. That's verse 3. As we know Jesus better, his divine power gives us everything we need for living a godly life. As we get to know Jesus better, his divine power gives us everything that we need for living a godly life. That's verse 3. And verse 4 is, And by that same mighty power, he has given us all his rich and wonderful promises. He has promised that you will escape the decadence all around you caused by evil desires and that you will share in his divine nature. That's his godly nature, his divine nature. Now we're going to look at 2 Peter 3 and 18. 2 Peter 3 and 18 reason is just one verse. 
And it reads, but grow in the special favor and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you all of the scriptures first, and then we're going to go on. For, and we're going to look at 1 Timothy 1 and 14. And it reads, oh, how kind and gracious the Lord was. He filled me completely with faith and the love of Jesus Christ. And we're going to look at 2 Corinthians. I have traveled many weary miles. I have faced danger from flooded rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts, and on the stormy seas. I have faced danger from men who claim to be Christians but are not. We're still talking about God's grace because you're going to face some things in this life and everybody that's going to claim to be Christian, uh, they're using the word, but it's nothing Christian about their life. I mean, all you got to do is stand back and look. And we're going to go in the Old Testament, we're going to look at First Genesis 9 and 11. Genesis 1, chapter 9. And verse 11, I thought I had marked everything off. Okay, I know I did, but you know how the enemy does. From, from it's 9 and 11, praise God. Okay, I solemnly promise never to send another flood to kill all living creatures and destroy the earth. Hallelujah, we bless the Lord today for his goodness and his mercy. And we're talking about the grace of God. The grace of God. Hallelujah. The grace of God. What is grace? What is this grace that we're talking about? Grace is defined as kindness, favor, and divine mercy. Now, in the Greek, it's called charis. C-H-A-R-I-S. Which is somewhat similar to the Hebrew word chesed, meaning loving kindness. It is frequently used to describe God's character. So grace is frequently used to describe the character of God. Charis usually signifies divine favor as well. As goodwill. But it also means that which gives joy. That which gives joy and that which is a free gift. How many of you know that you can't pay for grace? Grace is a free gift from God. It's God's unmerited favor. That's his grace. You didn't pay for it. You didn't earn it. It's because of who God is. God gives us that gift because he loves us so much. Paul referred to this word when he spoke of the free gifts of salvation. He was talking about chesed, a charis. And Peter, it says, but grow in grace, 2 Peter 3 and 18, and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grow in grace. Grow in grace. God's unmerited favor, goodwill. Grow in those things. Grow in it. Learn of God. Learn about God. Learn about Jesus Christ and the love that he had for us. And we grow in those things and we become more and more, more and more like God as we grow in the things that God has desired us to grow in. But we kind of pick and choose what we desire to grow in. And some of the things that we seek to grow in, it's not pleasing to God. In 2 Peter 1, 2-4, it said, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. That is other stuff that we're walking in, that's not from God. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, he called us by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. The promises that God has given us, they're exceedingly great. They're not just great. They're exceedingly great. That through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, 
having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. Well, there's corruption in the world through lust. But God has given us his divine grace. Glory to God. The knowledge of God grows in us as we mature in faith. As we mature in faith, what is faith? It says, now faith is the substance. That's Hebrews. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, it says, the knowledge of God grows in us as we mature in faith. We're in a continual process of growth and maturity in Christ. So as we continue to grow and mature in Christ, so our faith increases, but also the knowledge of God in us should also increase. The glory and virtue is our attributes that attract believers to Christ. The virtue of Jesus is his moral excellence. The virtue of Jesus is his moral excellence. So we have to walk in moral excellence. No, we may not get everything right, but that should be our goal, to walk in moral excellence so that we will represent the grace of God, the virtue of God, the character of God. His own disciples were astounded by God's virtue. God has given us many promises in his word. There are some that come with prerequisite. What is a prerequisite, Doc? A prerequisite is something that you have to do before something else takes place. Or, stated another way, a prerequisite is something that you have to meet before you can get to the next level. Just like in college. You have prerequisites. These are classes that are required before you can actually get in your actual curriculum. You have to have completed these things first. Some of the promises of God require us that we do certain things in order to receive those promises. You're not going to walk in all of this supernatural power and and laying on of hands and miracles and all and doing all these signs and wonders if you never have time to pray, if you never have time to fast. Those are some prerequisites. Yes, you might have a little bit of something going on, but if you really want to walk in the full manifestations of the gifts of God, you're going to have to give up something. And that means you're going to have to starve your flesh to feed your soul. You're going to have to do that. Glory to God. You must trust that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. We have to trust God. We have to trust God. We have to have faith in God. The grace of God. We have the favor of God that we didn't earn. Some of us might think we did, but we didn't earn God's grace. God's grace was a gift to us. We have to be participants with Christ to enjoy all that God has for us. We got to participate in the program and in the, the word of God that he has left here for us. We have to be participants of that word. We have to receive that word. We have to receive it in our heart. We have to nurture that word. We have to speak forth that word. We have to believe that word. We have to walk that word. If you want to be a participant of the things of God, you got to believe in his word. We have Christ on the inside of us becoming more Christ-like because we're new creatures in Christ. In this, we have already escaped the corruption of this world. We cannot stop there. We must continue to pray and to meditate on the word of God and spend time in fellowship with other believers to stay encouraged by one another. We need to stay connected by hearing and then by doing the word of God, not just a hearer. We're in a dispensation of grace. We're no longer bound by the law, which was at that time, no one could satisfy except God's only son, Jesus. 
Apostle Peter mentions stewardship in 1 Peter 4 and 10. It says, every man has received the gift, even so minister the same to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. God gave to Abraham special promises and God gave Moses uh, the, the holy law. Now, God has given to believers a special understanding of the grace of God. God has always been a gracious God. God was gracious to Adam and Eve when he provided them with coats of skins. In Genesis 3 and 21, God was gracious to Noah in Genesis 6 and 8. And God was gracious to the whole earth when he promised never again to bring a worldwide flood to destroy everything in it. In Genesis 9 and 11, God is a gracious God. In the past, God's grace was similar to a stream. It, it can be symbolic of a stream. It was always there, and it was always flowing, and the water of God's grace could be seen in every age. Today, God's grace is like a mighty river and has flooded its banks. God's grace is seen in a way that it has never been seen before. Today, God's grace is not only flowing, it's overflowing. The grace of God today is overflowing. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. His grace not only abounds, but it super abounds today. His grace is of today. It's exceedingly abundant. And that's in 1 Timothy 1 and 14. His grace is exceedingly abundant. Because of Jesus Christ, God is able to be kind even to those who were dead in trespasses and in sin. To us, to us, God is kind toward mankind. Grace is the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man. God is, no, is so gracious to those who deserve none of that. None of it. We don't deserve it. But he's a gracious God. God is kind to us, not because of us, but because of Jesus. God has graciously forgiven us our sins because of his son, Jesus, and the price that he paid on Calvary's cross for our sins. Only the cross at Calvary could open up the fountain of God's grace because Christ died on the cross. The overflowing grace of God is able to pour out to sinners. The good news is that Jesus died for us and God is completely satisfied that the penalty for sin has been paid in full through his son Jesus' death. The penalty for sin that was brought about by Adam and Eve has been paid in full. There's no sin debt. It was satisfied with the death of Jesus on the cross. Glory to God. Therefore, God is free to pour out his grace and kindness and love toward those who believe on his son. God's grace is greater than man's wickedness. God's grace, he gives grace upon grace and of his fullness, we have all received, and grace for grace. This is grace piled up upon grace, abundant grace, overflowing grace. God's gracious favor, which he showers us with on the children and on our children. Grace and truth come through Jesus Christ, grace was not shown at the expense of truth. Peter encourages those who the truth, that the truth to the, not let the truth depart from the way of the wicked and to grow in the grace and knowledge of the truth. He said, don't let it depart from you, but grow in the knowledge of the truth. In this, we will not fall prey to false teaching. If you grow in the knowledge of the truth, and the truth is the word of God, not all these different theories that people have come up with and all these theologies and all of this, uh, mm, that's man's doctrine. Don't get caught up with that foolishness. Stay in the word of God. 
Stay true to who you are. Stay true to who God is. Stay in the word. I, I don't care about uh, no doctrine that no man comes up with. That is a man's doctrine. And I'm good with it because it's yours. It's not mine. So I bless the Lord today. Moses said in Exodus 33, I said to the Lord, see you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name and you have also found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may find grace in your sight and consider that. This nation is your people. God's grace was accomplished by his intimate knowledge of and care for Moses. Because he loved Moses, God showed grace as indicated by him expressing, I know your name. God graciously promised Moses that his presence would go with them. Like Noah, Moses had found favor in the Lord's sight. And God granted his request. Safety does not consist of the absence of danger, but rather the presence of God. You can be safe and yet in a danger zone as long as you know you have Jesus Christ on your side. God showed grace toward Esther. She obtained grace before the king and favor in his sight more than any other virgins. So he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. God controls even the hearts of kings. God rules and overrules the thoughts of actions of kings and judges. For God is the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords and he's a gracious God. All of creation is under God's control and he's sovereign. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. So I bless the Lord on today. And so I came up with grace, God riches. The riches of God, grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. So God bless you on this morning. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And just go back and you can look at the scriptures. And I, I tell you, uh, God told Apostle Paul when he was asking him to remove the thorn from his flesh. He was asking God to heal him. Uh, God told him, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect. In weakness, God's grace is made perfect. His is perfect in our weakness. So God bless you all today. And again, this is Dr. Susie Smallwood with Matters of the Heart on Eternal Life TV. God bless you. And I'll see you uh, when I return for my next um, show. And I thank all of you all for watching. And I just thank the Lord. I thank God for his grace, for his mercy. I thank him for all he's doing in my life. I pray that you got something today from the message. Um, I didn't want to go a full hour today, but God is good on today. And his mercy endureth forever. So until next time, this is Dr. Susie Smallwood with Matters of the Heart on Eternal Life TV. God bless you and do have a wonderful and blessed day. Spread some sunshine today. God bless you. This is Apostle and Dr. Smallwood, and she is out.